<laughs> I'm seeding the kids. No. Well, I wonder, you spent some time out there some years ago. <laughs> yes, <I did. laughs> nice, nice to see you. Uh, were you a Cub fan? I'm a St. Louis Cardinal fan, and, <laughs> and we're going to win this year. <laughs> John Rodemaker. Mr. President. Hello there. Very pleased to meet you. Nice to see you, and I am a Cub fan. <laughs> <laughs> and well, John Dad. Beautiful present. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Very well. Okay. Okay. Shall we get this group picture too? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, listen, I I'm working it all so much. Thank you. Thank you all for it. All that you have been doing, and particularly right now in my latest crisis, which is the work of there, and an organization like yours, and with three million members and all, it's most powerful. But we can't let out because the opposition is as well as we can. Deeply grateful, and also for your support of our efforts to maybe see by the year 2000 worldwide <laughs> subsidies will be eliminated. We. Uh... We said that sounded awfully good to us, too. It, it, it may be a little bit uh, optimistic, but 2,000 is a long time away. Yeah. A lot of things can happen, and, yes. and, the, and the direction is right, obviously. So on the board nomination, we, uh, we, we get, we're getting pressure from the country. That's how we took a stand. We never had before on the Supreme Court nomination or any judicial nomination, but we were getting calls from our members to the oh, state farm bureaus all over. and. Uh, it came in the American Farm Bureau Board and, and said, look, Farm Bureau, you ought to take a position on this one this year. And our board, uh, we asked Howard Baker to come out, and, and he met with our board. And uh, we knew what side Howard would be on before he came. <laughs> but uh, but our, well, Henry Vaughn of California is one of our board members, and you know, you know Henry. Yes. And, uh, but it was, it was unanimous amongst our board that we, oh, we should support the board nomination. Today, and I have a, we, we left copies here with uh, your office. Uh, we've sent a letter to, uh, uh, to, sec to uh, uh, Chairman Biden of the Ju Judiciary Committee, to the committee, uh, saying we're in support, and uh, which many people know. And we have gotten some activity going in the country, which I guess is important to get some letters yes. and calls in. And, and yes. this, this meeting today with you gives us another opportunity to, to, to go back again and say, here, here's, a, here's something new. I met with the president. <laughs> have, have another shot at it, right. and, uh, and we're going to do it. So, well, that's great. I'm most grateful. Mr. Dan, just souvenirs for you. Maybe I've done this before. I did not. <laughs> just oh, thank, you. thank you very much. My goodness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Would you have time for a story that would that would apply in this case? Yes. Because you, you you've been able to tell a story now. Uh, no, no. <laughs> yes. Dagwood, the, the, the comic strip Dagwood, years ago, I think I was maybe a kid, thinking about all these people that are against Bork and uh, the organization that are against him. Dagwood's neighbor is, is Herb Woodley. Herb Woodley came over and said, Dagwood, I'd like to borrow your lawnmower. And Dagwood said, Herb, uh, I, I, I'm going to say no because I haven't shaved yet this morning. Dagwood said, what's that got to do with me borrowing your lawnmower? Dagwood said, when you don't want to do something, any excuse will do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's some of these things that are happening here. Any excuse will do when they have made up their mind. And apparently to me, it seems a lot of these folks have made up their mind. And they're looking for that excuse. And you can find it. Anytime you want to find an excuse, you can find it. Well, I'll give you one in return. I'm a collector of Soviet <laughs> stories that I find <laughs> that I can determine are told among the Soviets by themselves. It shows their sense of humor, but also their cynicism about their system. And you know, there is a 10-year waiting period for buying a car in the Soviet Union. You're ready to buy 10 years for delivery. So this fellow is finally ready and goes through all the agencies and finally the last one, and they stamp the paper, and he gives them the money. You have to give them the money in advance. And the fellow said, now come back in 10 years and get your car. And he said, morning or afternoon. And the fellow said, well, what difference does it make? We're talking 10 years now. Well, he said, the plumber's coming in the morning. <laughs> Does say something about the, the Soviet system. Oh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.
enjoyed this, and, and uh, we're going to do our best on the board of nomination. And uh, appreciate you. appreciate your, uh, your what you're doing on, on the phasing out of farm subsidies. And one last thing before we leave: keep up the battle against the tax increase. Uh, that's oh. another issue that we ought. I, I don't need I to change your mind on that one, but that. we. They coming up with all these reasons, you know, why we need a tax increase in the country, in my state of Iowa, and all the state. And you just got to say, as you're saying, no. no. The, the alternatives, uh, you know, we'll, we'll live without some of those good things that you're telling us <laughs> taxes will buy. Well, yes, and you know there's a, I have never, haven't had time to check this out yet, but there's been a recent survey by some very respected intellectuals in the economic field, a study, and their study reveals but here in, in these recent years, any, for every dollar of increase in revenues from tax, a tax increase, spending has increased a dollar and 59 cents. So uh, they don't really use a tax increase to settle a the deficit. They just go out and buy some more things. I'm a believer in cutting off their oxygen. <laughs> standing, standing on that oxygen tube right down there. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, it's it's good to see you, and I thank you for all that support. If the Cubs can't win, maybe the car will make me Bye, Mr. President. Thanks. Serrano. I recall Ms. Serrano. Having been appointed an incident in the United States Navy. Having been appointed an incident in the United States Navy. Under the conditions indicated. Under the conditions indicated. To accept such appointment and do solemnly swear. To accept such appointment and do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Well, Bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office on which I'm about to enter. On the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes. This is the certificate that you signed. It's ready for presentation for an hour. Yes. There you are. Thank you, Walter. That's your diploma. <laughs> <laughs> Group family shot. Like uh, this is your souvenir of your visit to the Oval Office. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you want to do all your family first? Do you have any friends? Why don't we have the rest of the family come over?
Captain, can you kind of put it on the squeeze in a bit? Squeeze in a bit. Thank you. It's good to see you. down and giving us an opportunity to, to uh, give you our thoughts because I know it's got to be a tough call. But I'm reminded seeing Jim Baker there, I was told us, hey, you know, it cost us $12 billion refinancing when you didn't do what you should have been done doing earlier on. And interest rates rose, you know, after the decline. Well, this, having that debt ceiling, though, would have been pretty tough for us to say, hell, we're going to debt us in that darn thing and go to something else. We had to do it. And in that agreement, uh, now, next year, when you present... Good to see you again, Mr. Speaker. This time, we'll see you with the duly elected member of the 100th Congress. It, it is terrific. It's terrific. 
size of that picture. Also, you are ready to be congratulated. Yeah. You know, this was an example of where I had help from all kinds of people. I mean, uh, from the most liberal to the most conservative, everybody helped me. Everybody can claim it. So. <laughs> well, you claim it most of all. And I look forward to working with you in the future. You're a member now of a pretty outstanding group. This freshman class has been most supportive they of have what we try to do. They have been. I hope in, in many cases I can do the same. You know, there, I still represent Stuart McKinney's district, so it's a, a district that is more Democratic than Republican. But I have to tell you, you called me uh, the next day, and they, your White House people met me at Oscar's Deli. Uh, and I, you called me, and they, they sent me downstairs in the basement, and everybody in the deli was all excited that you were going to call. And so I went downstairs, and I picked up the phone, and when we were on the phone, and people upstairs were picking up the phone and listening in. <laughs> well, that I didn't know, because I was out in California. And I, it, was, it was such a, you know, I was so concerned that they'd say, uh, what do you want to order? And, and, I, and then I would hope that you would know it was someone else. But our conversation had many people listening. It was kind of fun. <laughs> well, by golly, congratulations Thank again. you. Thank you. I mean, Shall we get one? Is there a possibility we can do one? Uh, we had one pass sitting at the desk, and I would love that again, if that's right. possible. This time I'll try to look more relaxed. <laughs> do you have a busy schedule today? Do you have a busy schedule today? Or is it oh, busy? yes. It's one of those. I've been meeting about, been meeting about work and some of the, uh, quite over your still have it. Laid out a verdict, yeah. We have lots of things to think about.